Hi, it's Chuck from Above the Basement, Boston Music and Conversation. This episode includes a few firsts. We had our first baby on the show and also the largest number of people speaking. We thought this might be an interesting one and we were not disappointed. Seeing Walter Sickert and the Army of Broken Toys play live is a visceral experience not to be missed. With a mix of Dr. Teeth, Edward Gorey, and Tim Burton, they bring legit musical chops, original songwriting, and a magical artistry to the stage. Ronnie and I had a really fun time with these wonderful people. People, and I mean that these are great people with lots of cursing, laughing, and crazy stories. We think you are going to enjoy this one. The song you just heard is called Whole Way Down, and a bit later you'll hear Come Black Magic, both off of their most recent album of the same name. You can hear even more of Walter on the soundtrack of the film Some Freaks, which is being released at this very moment. We are also treated to a live performance at the end, a song called Old Skin. Here is our conversation with the Motley Crew, Walter Sickert and the Army of Broken Toys, recorded at Woods Hill Table in Concord, Massachusetts. I want one of these. Can I take this home too? Yeah, it's a nice party favor. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> Best <laughs> podcast ever. <laughs> can we drink that water? Yeah, you that's can. for you. Please you can. drink the water. It's yeah. grass fed, oh, yeah. gluten free water. Uh, hi, guys. Hello. Hi. Thank you for coming. Any of you Pro Tools people? Sure. So, with this interface, yep. for whatever reason, I can't hear anything through my headphones unless I turn the latency right. off. So, I'm hearing myself 15 times in my head right now. Mm. So, if I oh. tend to talk strangely, just ignore it. Okay. If I tend to talk strangely, it's because of all the acid I'm on. So. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be all right. All right. As long as you share some after okay, the good. fact. Yeah. At the 99. At the 99. <laughs> it's, the acid's <laughs> free if the Red Sox win. Did you know that? <laughs> yeah, so that baby could eat free tonight. Oh. Did they win? Kind of eats Yesterday, they, didn't they lose one and win? That's win true. Right? He just took yeah. off his Red Sox diaper. It was really cute. Aww. He's a diaper that looks like a baseball. The Red this, Sox. Is our, this is our first baby oh, on the podcast. He wins. <laughs> Can we give the first name? Is that... His name is Asa. So he's not the baby that you bring on stage. No, that's a different baby. That's a different baby. Wait, our band just keeps making them. <laughs> that, <laughs> we'll inspire babies. How old is the young The squid person? kid, the one that was on stage at the BMAs with us, yeah. Wednesday Alice is... 2.5. Her name is Alice? Al- uh, Wednesday, Wednesday Alice. Wednesday. Wednesday Alice. Mm-hmm. I like it. Wednesday's her first name? Yep. Wednesday That's very cool. Alice. You don't hear oh. anyone named Alice anymore. That's true. I have an Aunt Alice. Hi, Aunt Alice. Her That's middle her? name's Agnes, so. Oh, so. After my grandmother. So she has four names. She has, well, she's like a million of them, but yeah. She's like the devil. <laughs> <laughs> the two next generation broken toy children, there's only two. <laughs> right. right? So, yeah. far. Yeah. so far. Yeah. Okay. That we right. know of. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So Asa was on stage at the at the BMAs. Yes. He's just, yeah. he was just inside. Yeah, that's right. 
Oh, okay. <laughs> He's very present. You can see him. Because <laughs> that's that's where we first saw you. We walked in, and you were the first band we saw. Fucking oh, welcome. Wow. And, <laughs> and we were there yeah. like, what? wow. <laughs> Literally, I think I turned around, and we were all, what is this Boston band? <laughs> this is not a Boston band. This is like a New York band. You don't see this in Boston very oh, wow. It was, I'm, I'm exaggerating a little bit, but oh, it's certainly a visual... <laughs> it, it's nothing you see. Uh, are not there other enough. bands like you guys in, not b- in Boston? Not anymore. Oh <laughs> uh, no, we killed them all. Like the Highlander, <laughs> there was a bunch fair. that were just I like us. I didn't give that detail. Sorry, away. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, but there were a few. There were. There's the Broken Army of Boys, and we killed all those guys. Uh, there was the Broken Army of Joys. We killed all of them. Mm-hmm. Till there was only one, and it was us, and we're left. We all have our heads. Still, we have their heads too. And theirs. <laughs> Lots of pets. But seriously, though, like if if you killed them all, right? Is that legal? Is that something you can do in Boston now with the mu- in the music scene? Is well, literally just we literally in kill them? So yes. yeah. Kill them with kindness, because <laughs> then you will prevail as the best <laughs> and the strongest. It was more like Akira, like we just absorbed them. Um, so they're kind of still alive, but their skeletons have, are dissolving in our. That's why my hair is so big. Yeah, and, and what it's else? Filled hair. with other bands. Yeah. <laughs> This did start with the words, though, seriously. <laughs> we should probably. Sorry, it's not possible. So if you can't see uh, on the they, podcast, which they can't people see. can't <laughs> usually <laughs> see, I'm holding up this beautiful golden key. All of the songs are sort of embedded into this beautiful golden key. Yes. That's oh, the that most novel is? thing. I just thought it was a cool looking key. You thought it was a keychain? It's a whole discography <laughs> it's on that one too. USB. It's a lot of music. This is all of their songs on this metal <laughs> awesome. key. Eight gigabytes. Eight gigabytes. Yeah. We have a lot of, a lot oh, yeah. of music. Yep. We've been a band for a long time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. See? <laughs> <laughs> I agree, Asa. <laughs> We've made a lot of records. There are, what, yeah. like five or six studio albums, but then also these other ten albums that we wrote. But it says yeah. a lot about, too, about your creativity, too, from what you see on stage and what you hear hear and not only what you hear but what is within the lyrics and to everything behind the artwork this sort of to me symbolizes a lot about what you guys are in this room because i've never seen this before where did you guys start in the city it was a long time ago in a galaxy far far away (laughs) i was squatting in a basement in the middle of the woods i mean a barn not a basement That'd be strange, just a basement. Um, now you're above the basement. I was above that. Yeah, finally, I'm above the basement. Amen. Um, right. Sorry, I got a broadcast in, okay. through my head. What was the? Oh, right. When did it start? The barn in New Hampshire. Yeah, it was. A, I was squatting in a barn in New Hampshire. Um, I had a little, uh, little Fostec four track, and I would record songs and paint. And I thought that that would be the end of it, and like maybe I would disappear into the woods one day. But I went to this art show because there was this thing called MySpace, and I put some of these weird songs up there. And so people kind of knew that I made weird things. And someone invited me to this really bizarre show in Cambridge, Mass. That was me, Edry. Yep. I, I went there, and I played. Basically, all I did for like 20 minutes was smash teacups on my head that were f- filled with fake blood. But we became friends, Edry and I. How much of the story do we tell them? That's good. Okay. <laughs> That's a great then the, start. The, then the band proceeded. This is, so this is like, what, 2006? Yeah. And then in 2008, I was playing a, in an obscure artist space in Boston. I was playing some solo viola where I also smashed teacups full of fake blood. It's, like, really weird how yeah, that happened. Yeah. <laughs> and then I, I finished playing. This thunderstorm rolls in, and I'm out in a garden. And I'm playing. It was totally epic. And then after me, I was like, this can't get any better. And <laughs> after me, these, these jokesters come up. And it's Walter and Edgy, <laughs> several <laughs> people in bunny costumes. <laughs> Someone with a giant syringe. It's very scary. Co- it, was, it was craziness. And I was like, it did get better. <laughs> it's like, I want to be on that level, I think to myself. And then 20 minutes later, Edgy's like, do you want to be in our band? And I was like, do I? <laughs> and so my conservatory trained butt leaped from, <laughs> from my conservatory education into the band. <laughs> um, and from then, I think we just kind of rolled along yeah. like a tumbleweed collecting other strange musicians than my, JoJo. My space kidnapped me a little around the same time as Rachel. Uh, around 2007, I did a shtick called the Burlesque Poetess. And that's JoJo talking. I'm JoJo. That's JoJo. Plays yes. ukulele. Play ukulele and flute. And originally, flute. I just interrupted them. I was like the interrupting cow. Yeah, there'd be clothing yeah. malfunctions. There'd be comedy. There'd be motorboating, you know, <laughs> vicariously wandering through the audience. And then they'd get back to playing music eventually. And then we were on tour with Mike Leggio, our en- enigmatic bass player, who you may not hear from, but it's here. <laughs> He's here, though. Uh, we were on tour in Vermont, and I grabbed a ukulele that was my size, like the size of my torso. And I was like, I could just 
wear the ukulele on stage and learned a few chords for the night. I had a childhood education in music, but I taught myself ukulele so that I could be slightly more useful, I say in air quotes, <laughs> useful. Rachel joined and Mike uh, became more of a permanent bass player, so we became like uh, the Power Rangers, <laughs> one by one joining. I'm Mary Widow. I have been friends with the toys for about as long as they've been around. And when I'm not a toy, I am a burlesque performer and producer. We've produced several rock shows together over the years. And around 2014-ish, the toys got the opportunity to do one of my favorite plays of all time called Shock-Headed Peter. Can I tell them what mm -hmm. you said? Okay. <laughs> so I got a call. Um, I auditioned for the show as an actor because it is one of the most formative shows for me that I've ever seen. I used to teach theater and I used to teach that show to my, my kids at the theater and I have a tattoo from the show. So I ran into some of the toys at a party and they were like, Widow, we're doing Shock Headed Peter. You have to audition. So I did. And then I got a call a few weeks later from Edry saying, hey, so first I had gotten an email from the company saying, you know, sorry, thanks but smell you later. And Edry called me probably the next day being like, actually, so yes, you are in the show and we want you to be in the band and we want you to do all of my stuff because I'm pregnant and I'm due during the show. <laughs> so I was one of the first people to know and I had to keep a secret for months and you months. You were like the third person to know. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and then I thought that my tenure as a toy was just going to be shock-headed Peter. And I was, you know, really happy for the experience. And they're obviously very good friends of mine. So I was like, well, that's cool. You know, I'll just go back to, like, being homies. And then we had a, uh, a party. Walter came up to me in the kitchen. And it was really sweet and really cute. Like, he was asking me to the prom. He's like, hey, Widow, I know you're really busy. But, like, you know, I really like working with you. And if you want to be in the band. I was like, yep, yep, I want to be in the band. Yep, okay, great. <laughs> and that was a... Uh, several years ago and now we make magic weird awesome stuff mm -hmm. yeah right so, <laughs> so out of what, who was the most so you, you have you know burlesque you have some motorboarding going on <laughs> poetry <laughs> who was the most straight laced in the beginning and then jumped in head first into what you guys are doing were you all kind Mike. of doing yeah. some <laughs> <laughs> we say Mike because he won't speak. Even if we, <laughs> we can, we can say whatever we want. He's Mike, like anybody could see me. <laughs> but yeah. by straight laced, all we mean is he's in a three piece suit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> because <laughs> Mike's been in more rock bands than all of, all of us of combined. <laughs> Mike's got more stories than you guys. We just yes. can't. We don't know I what they are. I swear to God. <laughs> yeah. And if you don't know where Mike is, he's got a scotch and a steak someplace. True. And yeah, if you can't steak. find him, he's drinking something better than what you can afford. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's where he is. With some ladies. And introducing yeah. himself to enigmatic, beautiful women in dark corners. <laughs> <laughs> and they love it. Wow. That's high praise. I know. Yeah. He doesn't yeah. say anything. This is why he doesn't talk. <laughs> It's because he talks it. like this. <laughs> so Walter Sickert, I, I, I did my research. Mm -hmm. He was an artist. He was also thought to be possibly an accomplice to Jack the Ripper. Say what? Maybe, yeah. <laughs> Whatever. Walter, what did you do, man? Hey, look, it was a long time ago. Yeah. It was, a, it was across the pond. All right, all right. Sure. What happens in Whitechapel stays in Whitechapel. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. He's trying to start a new life over here, man. Yeah, you why do you bring that up? Come on, I didn't know there would be hardball questions. <laughs> no, one gotcha. no one else, no one's listening. As your lawyer, I advise you, <laughs> I advise you to take this asset. And Was it, it a question? No. <laughs> no, I did do it. My, my segue is into not only the image that you guys do and, the, and the, you know, the dancing and what you look like and everything, but and the artwork. The reviews I've read about you and everything else, people have kind of thrown the, the Tim Burton... Dr. Teeth, which I really sure. liked. Yeah, 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 man. You know what Dr. Teeth is, Ron? Uh, yes. <laughs> Google, Google, Google. Wait, Google I'm going to Google it right now. <laughs> we're like, no, is no, that the... Like is that the, the when you look them up, you'll be like, oh, yeah. They're they sitting are exactly right here. Like the <laughs> <laughs> They're Muppet like, Wait, is that the... the didn't you guys do that video on the... Uh, the kind of Muppets. Oh. Oh, Dr. Teeth in the band. Yeah, like yeah. Mayhem. No, the dentist. Dr. Teeth. <laughs> <laughs> is he like with Rolf in the... Yeah. In no, the, Rolf is not in the electric band. No, but, no, but it, it, Dr. Teeth was like the bass animal. player in the band. No, no he was the keyboard oh, Floyd, player. Floyd is my favorite Muppet of all time. <laughs> Wait, let's Teeth watch the original Muppet keyboard. movie real quick, and then we'll finish no, the, the, the green guy played the, there's a sax player. Zoot. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then there was the, the blonde. Janice. 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 Come on. Right. And the dog was Rolf on the keys. But Rolf... Rolf was not in the band. Rolf does play a piano. Yeah, yeah. 
He you sings a real problematic, in toxic, misogynistic song about it. Kermit yeah. ran into Rolf. Rolf was the bar pianist in the Muppet movie. Because I actually did play Rolf in a in a play a few oh, years ago. Well, I'm glad and you did And I thought research. he was along with Dr. Teeth. No. Oh, mm-hmm. man. All right. Mm-hmm. Anyway, go back to Dr. Teeth. <laughs> so sad. And Tim Basically Burton. Basically, that, we're that band that we are. Yeah. But, you know, so I'm sure you've heard all the kind of comparisons of, like, what kind of imagery you guys put. But Ed Gorey. Um, Edward Gorey. Edward Gorey, Edward Gorey kind of popped mm-hmm. out. Oh, sure. yeah. yeah. Definitely root cause for us. Oh, <laughs> good, good. Yeah, I mean, I, you know that book, Ron? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Which it, one? I mean, there are many, so many, many, yeah. many books. I don't know what writer, it is yeah. about that book. So I'm many books. fascinated with that book. You're thinking of Gashley Well, which one? The, the Alphabet book? The Alphabet book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's phenomenal. Oh, The Nightmare Before Christmas. That's what I was thinking. There you go. That's the Tim Burton. Tim Burton thing, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, we'll be doing that again this year. Yeah, so yeah. last year we put on the, the inaugural, <laughs> I almost said that right. Eggnogrial. Eggnog um, <laughs> show of Something Strange, which is our Nightmare Before Christmas homage. Uh, homage, where we play all the songs from the movie. Oh, sweet. And it's all paired with amazing, talented dancers and performers who manifest the movie in a slightly more perverted way, so it's more interesting and bizarre and maybe adult, adulty. Um, but we're bringing it back because it was so popular. And we're bringing it back for three days. Three days. Sweet. Three days. November you guys going to play 30th, live? December yeah. 1st and December 2nd at Oberon. Cool. Yeah, we play, we play live, and it's it's a lot of fun. Tim Burton songs are Danny are Elfman. Danny, 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 Danny Elfman, Elfman. Yeah. 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 No messing yeah. around. Danny Elfman's amazing. Yep. Um, uh, it's a dream to play Sally, though, which I'm so thrilled about. You're an amazing singer. Uh, Widow plays mandolin and does a lot of singing in the band and plays xylophone. So do you actually do the, the, the movie, or do you kind of do... Yeah, stories out we, of do, it we do a musical narrative of the whole thing from start to finish and um, the only time you see the actual movie is when it's like an amalgam edit of a digital visual video art that projects over everything yeah, we put some happening. of our stuff in there too like our songs think about a shadow cast for Rocky Horror but with more reliance on the live than anything being projected and that which is being projected has Walter's art and that's like the mu- Museum of Science stuff you did well yeah right, the Museum the of Science was even you know it was just another experience that was just bizarre and like so humbling so fulfilling and, and wonderful to have that opportunity to play at such a special place mm-hmm. so when they asked us to play at the, the planetarium i mean that was a treat in itself but then they were like hey we want you to give us your visual art and we're going to work with our animators and make this beautiful dome it's usually immersive uh, yeah, yeah projections immersive projections and three-dimensional brain fuckery that's my third fuck fourth. uh fourth fuck sorry fifth, fifth, checking five, with six. fifth fuck six. checking with oh six. Six. oh my god oh! I don't think they count if you so say that times. they existed. <laughs> okay. So you have, I think we get, you have three more gimmies. He has, he has 37. Okay. Yeah, so far. Um, you know, so, they projected so, everything on the dome. Right, yeah. I mean, uh, the audience, I was jealous of the audience. Everybody gets to kind of just lay down these recliners and watch this crazy shit while we play around in the middle surrounding the Death Star, the Death Star basically, yeah. which is the giant laser machine that shows all the projections. Oh, yeah. I love and that. And it's thing. just like spinning around our heads, and, and it was so much fun. It was such a great turnout. They're having us back for a Halloween show. Oh, on 1026. Really? Yeah, we get so. to do it again. And it's going to be a different set, so we're going to play some different songs, and the artwork will also be different. Yeah. So you did the artwork specifically for that performance? So Walter draws all the time. Yeah. So he has thousands and thousands of pieces of art. So we called some of our favorites and gave them some ideas. And then their animators took those and animated them to the music. So we had to give them the set list and recordings of the songs so they could animate to the song. And then we did a full dress rehearsal um, the night before so that they could practice. Because they, they animated as much as they could, but we're a live band so they had to do some live mixing of the visuals as well. Um, so we did a full dress rehearsal and then it was just a magical experience. I'm so, so bummed fun. I missed it. Well, well come to the You got another show. chance, yeah. 10-26. Once again, 1026 mm-hmm. Museum of Science, right? Mm-hmm. Yep, in the planetarium. Mm-hmm. The last thing I saw at the planetarium was a Pink Floyd laser show. Oh, yeah. Cool. yeah, this is just like that, but a way better. Yeah, because we get to look it up. Yeah, because we're really there. You can touch us. Ago. So when I look at a sticker, or when I look at one of these Army of Toys drawings, you drew this one, right, mm-hmm. Walter? I drew oh. You do everything. Everything. Okay. When you have made these creations, do you think about a song as well? Or do you have songs that you've written that inspire art? Does it sort of connect in your mind before it's displayed? For sure. For me, 
visual art and musical art are the same thing, you know? So I can be working on a song and be like the whole time seeing a little movie that's happening. Or maybe it's something more simple, like it's just a person. But it's always connected, you know, that, that DNA of art that just kind of shifts in my blood and, and takes a little bit of every kind of movie that I enjoy or, or a ghost story that I've heard or song on the radio and mix that all up. But for me, I think part of like staying able to create without feeling like it's stifling is to just go for it and let your mind go and not really have like, oh, I have to do this, 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 and this. It has to be like this. This is the type of song I want to write. And instead of that, explode on the piece of paper, on the canvas, or on the recording. Do you have artwork that comes to your mind first or songs? It depends. You know, usually a lot of the subject matter comes from my dreams too. So like I'll wake up and I'll write down everything that I've dreamt about. And a lot of that stuff turns into like some chord progressions or lyrics or you know, covers to an album. Well, and the name of the band cool. came from a dream, too. When you say that you kind of let things happen, mm -hmm. this must be why you guys play, like, little children's toys and different sonic instruments to see what happens when you start playing them, right? It's Definitely. I mean, that's always been my experience. I and mean, when we started out, it was just a two-piece, you know? It was just me and Edri, and it was, I had my guitar and my piano, and then she had, like, a suitcase full of, a, like, a wind-up uh, cymbal monkey from Monkey Shines. Or like a teeny tiny uh, toy drum set. Widow and uh, Edry still play toy accordions all the time. I think that there's definitely like a ghost in, the, in those little toys that you can catch that is like a snowflake. Like it's going to happen a certain way, one time, always be recording because you never know what's going to happen and what's going to work out. Mm. And then kind of find that, that lucky uh, golden snowflake and, and grab onto it. And that's how the recording process is for us too. Like Walter comes with hundreds of ideas for songs and, and we have to sort of get our arms around something and form that. He doesn't say, okay, you play that accordion line and Rachel, here's the viola part I want you to play and here's the bass thing. He brings something and then we add to it as ourselves. So everybody in the mm -hmm. band is fully themselves and they bring their own musical influences and their own instruments and their own personality to each of the songs. That's, I really appreciate that yeah. about being in this band. I've also been playing music for a long time too and one of my favorite things about being a toy is that it is a family and also everyone has a voice musically. We also support each other and help encourage each other. And so if Rachel is like, hey, Widow, why don't you try like beep boop, beep boop instead of boodly beep? And I'm like, oh, yeah, that sounds great. You know? <laughs> That's mostly how we write our parts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and like meowing. Right. There's also meowing. No, but it's super, it's super awesome. The collaborative process is great. And there's really just a nice magic in the room when a song is coming together and we know it's like it's just finished and we just got it. And it's, really great the artist side you all have the musical chops and certainly people can see you come on the stage and be skeptical they can be like okay what's coming on the <laughs> stage right it's just because it's it's a surprise i was hoping you would ask yeah. something like that actually be and then you guys totally back it up if you didn't know what you guys look like on stage and just listen to the music i mean it's phenomenal stuff i was listening to it all day this is on a loop and it's great
So I was going to ask about live performance. So you played overseas a few times, right? Mm-hmm. What's the plan? Are you guys going to be focusing on a certain area or cruising around the country? Or We've done rock tours, and those are fun. And it's great to play in little dirty rock clubs. But we also look for weird partnerships, like the Planetarium, for instance, is a partnership with the Museum of Science that took two years to cultivate. I huh. was after them to do a summer series like this, and, and that's the kinds of shows that we try to cultivate no matter where we're going to be. That's cool because there's millions of bands doing that rock tour thing. And yeah, I mean, when you get to a level where you can pack houses different places, that's amazing. But to do these unique venues, that's pretty wild. I'm trying to do maybe the shows that only we could do um, or fill a niche people didn't know was a niche. You know, at the very beginning you said when you beheld us at the BMAs, you thought New York, question mark, Boston... I have to say, I feel like we were all uh, at the same art shows before we were a band, and it was kind of a culmination of the culture that was very much Boston, like the cabaret rock scene. So obviously the poet's been thinking about this. Also when you see us and you think, is it a gimmick, is it a shtick, when we back it up, I think it's because we are as arty as it looks. We're just purists. There's no irony. There's no costume. I think there's no costume. There's no irony. I think that's the biggest thing. it just makes life easier. Yeah. And thank goodness people stay and are delighted and surprised, you know? Like when you when you see us on the street, it's, first of all, we're quite a motley crew. And anytime we've toured, especially across the border, people are like, what, what, what are those people doing next to each other? It's, it's, no, I can't wrap my mind around why all those people are standing together. So we look so, so wacky together. Um, and I think what you see on stage really is just exaggeration, you know, super saturated version of what we look like all the time, you know, so it, there, it's not a costume. It's not a costume, no it's costume. all our personality. So I wanted to address what you said about seeing us and being like, who are these weirdos? And then all of a sudden you were like, holy crap, I love them. I didn't say weirdos. <laughs> We uh, we it's opened. Weirdos. We are weirdos. Yeah, that's yeah, that's we opened. Um, that we opened for the Dead Milkmen. Oh really? A couple yeah. of years ago. The Sinclair. And so the audience was. I was calling them punkles because oh, you know no. it's older punks. Yeah. You know Our and punk uncles. Punk uncles. Um, I like it. Yeah. So you know the audience was full of you know punkles and and thirty somethings and twenty somethings and whoever and. Uh, they did not expect lots of arms to, crossed. Yeah, <laughs> lots of arms crossed, standing there, looking at us, right. being like, you know, what is this circus that we're about to see? And by the end, people were dancing and singing along, and we Rest sold up. out of all of our merch that night. <laughs> so, awesome. well, you know, it yeah. goes back to what you said. It's awesome. honest, and it, if you're not faking it up on stage, no. people get it. They yeah, get yeah, that, that sense immediately. It's, it's genuine. Yeah. yeah. How exhausting would it be if this was an act? <laughs> 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 I don't well, know how much longer I can do this. I don't think you'd last. So, I mean, <laughs> right? Yeah. You know, I mean, as a group, it feels yeah. good to just not say just that. For, not. I'm ta- not talking about fans, but as a group too, mm-hmm. because you have to. It's like a family. You're like, getting that I would imagine. But I think Derek that's also I that's think. also thin. You know, that's that's a thin experience, and I think that people listening and watching us would it would feel like a gimmick, and I think what people see is that it's not a gimmick and it's not thin. It's who we actually are. You know, we actually like each other. We love yeah. making music together, and I don't think it's too shady to say sometimes Edry talks to other band leaders and comes back to us and says we operate very differently in the <laughs> rehearsal room and it's shocking to me because this, we're so yeah we'll argue I say it with air quotes but we're not in it for any reason other than the art making there's no agenda to our bickering or discussion or creative process but if somebody wants to give us millions of dollars It'll and let it. us tour forever that would be great oh, <laughs> yeah. we'll sell out we'll totally sell out oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm just talking about the inner organic <laughs> we will be we pure like pure art millionaires <laughs> oh yeah no no reason why art can't sell. I'm all for it. I wanted to talk briefly about the actual songs, some of the actual songs. First of all, the Ghostbusters version you guys did <laughs> blew me away. Yeah. I was like, they did a Ghostbusters cover? Oh, yeah. And did I started, we? I was like, Many live that's show. pretty good. <laughs> Total new appreciation the for, that, for that song. <laughs> Total new Long before the remake. You, had, you have songs that are more of your standard verse, chorus, verse, chorus, but then you also have songs that are just kind of repetitive two note song the whole way through mm-hmm. and the changes are violin comes in viola comes in maybe you start screaming a little louder or, mm-hmm. or you know it gets more powerful in there sure. i like how you've, you've got both those in there you've got some standardy sounding songs and you've got songs that are just kind of like a repetitive dare i say punk 
two chord punk songs. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's I mean, what's you know what is punk, right? Like punk is uh, you know everything that's not polished, you know everything that's not a fake bullshit act. I don't, you know, none of us feel, you know, we have to fake our love for music or art. It's like a passion that, you know, we wake up every single day and that's what we love. We also have such varied backgrounds it's, Exactly, in music that was the second too. part of so that, like, for sure. I grew up listening to accordion music because I'm from North Dakota. <laughs> 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 and we didn't have any radio, so. I love accordion. Do you play accordion in the, in the mm-hmm. band? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 And, you play, and you play the glockenspiel. Sometimes. I got to say it. <laughs> oh, yeah. The Glock comes up in almost every op- it episode does, it somehow. It does not. It's, it's amazing. <laughs> well, it's so relevant to us. Yeah. yeah, there's yeah. two Glocks. Yeah. Ludo also oh, it's double yeah. Glock. Yeah, it's Ludo double Glocks. Glock. That's oh, yeah. like... Yeah. It's hot. It's a party. Yeah, <laughs> I can, yeah speechless. <laughs> I think as far as um, song form is concerned, some of it depends on Walter's vision or what we're trying to, to say as a band. So there's like there's a song called Little Paper Song, which is like not so thinly veiled about acid so it we made a lot say it. first line is let's take a little bit of acid so, in case you were, little paper means we just want to take you there immediately yeah. so that we can spend the rest of the song just Perfect like balls. yeah <laughs> yes so that song has like one vibe the whole time and it really does feel like a big crescendo like a slow just increase in energy because that's what we wanted the trip to feel like right you know so it depends like are is it is it a song like behave which is a story that's song you know so like you're going to follow these characters. You know, there are no characters in Little Paper Song. It's all about texture and what you see, much like yeah. an acid trip versus a song that's got a narrative versus a regular old rock song. You know, so there, it depends on what we're trying to say. We and also, some of the songs are, are long songs. Yeah. 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 They're not just two, three minute songs. A little bit orchestral. Right? Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, it kind like of makes it. for an interesting set, too. I mean, you're, it's, it's kind of theatrical in a sense, mm-hmm. bringing in all your influences, it seems that it's a show. And it's not three and a half minute. Thank you very much. Let's go to the next song. Three and a half minute. You we, know, these are our hits. We figure that if people are going to spend 20, 25 bucks coming to a show, they should probably see a show. Yeah. And for me, I, I, my background is in musical theater as well and psychedelic theater. rock. Yeah, theater. <laughs> um, and performing with the toys is, for me, many things. It is rock and roll and it's also sex and religion and magic and all of the things that are important to me. And, and that goes back to us being our genuine selves on stage, just kind of turned up to 11. And the main vibe of this band is love. You know, when we're really in the groove, you know, especially at the show you were at, we all were just so pumped. A live toys show is one of my favorite things and has been one of my favorite things since even before I was in the band. And we have a, a slogan that is a, a toys show will get you laid. <laughs> and... Um, really? And it's oh, yes. and it's true. <laughs> You're welcome. We've studied this. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. you got to do. Yeah, it all goes back to science. If for, that's for not Walter, good PR, right? I don't know what is. Uh, how often do you guys gig? Like we tried to do a local show once every three or four weeks. In October, there's going to be a week where we play three shows three in shows row. in a row but they're all completely different the first show is on 1025 at the Portsmouth Music Hall right oh, okay. and that's when we score a silent film which we do every single year for Halloween to raise money for the Portsmouth uh, Halloween Parade fantastic um, so like we've done uh, Metropolis we did Haxon last year cool. so this year we're doing the Black Pirate um, it's gonna be so cool so it's like what we do is we, we kind of rehearse it you know we know what the forms are gonna be we know what like points in the movie that we want to hit and what kind of music we want there but it's very much we go into it with like an open experimental vibe and all that happens live on stage yeah. for the audience we listen really carefully with each other and, and yeah. create uh, and it's, it's us. extremely <laughs> intimate for us on stage as a band because usually you're on stage and you're bombarded with lights and it's loud and you're you know blah, blah, blah. but for this like we're, we're kind of dark. set up in a round in the round the almost yeah. in the dark and with like, a movie can, projected behind us yeah, yeah. But then the next night we play on ten twenty six the planetarium. We play a planetarium show, which is going to be a show that like is rehearsed for being exactly what that show has to be because it has to be sunk up with all the animation and all the craziness that happens, you know. So that's very much like yeah, we, we can do our our little drifty crazy snowflake a little bit, but we always have to start and end at the same place. <laughs> And then the next night... Uh, and then on the 28th is uh, The Lawn on D is doing a season-closing finale, and we are the musical guests for the finale. So it's going to be a giant, loud rock show outside, outside. to a 1,000 people, mm-hmm. loud and crazy. Mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. Very much opposite vibes. of a silent movie. Yeah, yes. very yeah. much opposite <laughs> of a silent movie. Right. Are you leaving us? Well, thank you very much. Bye, Don't all. forget your glass. I got it. Oh, and your sticker. Bye, thanks, guys. You get a sticker, too. Oh, sweet. 
Yeah. And you can take that chair. See you, widow. Yes. All right, so now let's talk about her. <laughs> I love that having that. Widow. I love having that psychedelic witch in our band. She's How amazing. about you? <laughs> That's it. <laughs> I would say that in front of her. Wait, who's, where's your drummer? Or who is your drummer? <laughs> Where is our drummer? Is he coming? Oh my god, well, he's not here. Well, we're where's a little polyamorous when it comes to drummers. Our drummer is a legendary. That sit in with you. So it's a long story. We have two bears. Our drummer is Matt Zappa, the legendary Matt Zappa, who I'm, I'm sure he's doing something noble right now. Yeah, he's probably saving a child. From a tree from or a or cat. While teaching a, it to okay. drum. And, but then we have a, our drummer, TJ, who's been our drummer for a long time, and he, he moved to California. So then that's when we got a different drummer. And then now TJ will come on stage and like, we have the song um, Dull Boy, which is very much inspired by The Shining. It's a rocking, really hard, loud, fucking crazy song. And then like, I'll be like, wait a minute, this sounds like... Like there's more drums than there should be and I turn around there's two motherfucking drummers playing at the same mm, time bears. and that's some crazy shit yeah. but it speaks to like the toys I mean we're an open family like you know you, you know, we're always welcoming you want to come up and you want to play with us you play with us I mean that's how our shows are that's how we're with our, with our audience and that's how our band became eight people and uh, <laughs> there's a lot of improv going on on stage yeah sometimes yeah. yeah in certain aspects I think and for certain shows you know that like definitely at the silent film I mean that's probably like 60 70 percent improv for two hours <laughs> we have don't get, don't get us wrong we have loose ideas sketched out but it's not by no means run through with a metronome or anything well yeah because i mean certain yeah. shows you really can't you know yeah. i mean like what keeps things exciting is not repetition for me anyways the joy of creating is like really what fucking gets me going and inspires me and i think that's what keeps it fresh for most people so when you get that kind of um excitement and you can just go go for it and you can throw a bunch of paint on the canvas and trust the people you're playing music with which is a huge part of that you know where eventually you're going to end up you're not quite sure how you're going to get there but you know the fucking ride is going to be wonderful and you will record a lot of live stuff right we record everything yeah yep. i mean i was blown away with like, how many albums do they have <laughs> i don't even know so and you can that's them all and yeah because you can't really music. recreate those things you're talking about those mm -hmm. moments and those artistic it's not, you know, it's improv, but it's also it's sort ephemeral. of the bouncing off each other. What you're seeing on, on like our band camp and stuff, those are those are finished song ideas. Those aren't just like jam sessions that we've recorded. They're they're complete thoughts, complete musical gestures. Um, but then on top of that, there are hundreds of hours of rehearsals and jams that that Walter has recorded that right. he'll throw back to us. So we'll have a rehearsal and he'll bounce live recordings back if we want to listen back to that cool thing that we did. But yeah, anything that's kind of out there for the public, that's all the polished stuff. You guys do this RPM challenge? Yeah. You've been doing that every year since its inception or something? Yep. That's Can you explain true. what that is? Sure. Yeah. Since 2006, every February, we've recorded an entire album from start to finish, writing it, recording it, all the art, maybe make a video. We've done a couple of videos for an album here and there for the uh -huh. RPM Challenge. You know, one year it was actually, uh, we did a radio play conceptual album where we had songs that were intercut with radio play I wrote about the end of the world. And so I had all the band doing different voices and different characters and stuff like that. I mean, and that's that's 10 years of RPM. So there's, there's and each and one of those. And that particular one, 28 Seeds, became an actual play like a company called Lab Liars and Believers produced it as a play and had us play the music for it and brought in actors to do the radio play part so the weird strange February middle of the night oh I think we're going to do a radio play became an <laughs> actual production where we did 17 shows 10 of which sold out thank you very much <laughs> in the Cyclorama district yeah. yep. at the, oh. at the district. Boston Center for the Arts like, yeah. is there a time constraint on the making of the album you have to start Start on February 1st and end by the 28th. So you get a month. Yeah. Or you can start, you know, you can start on February 13th or yeah, February and I think forever. Walter incorporating it as an effortless thing we do annually is indicative of just how you got to be disciplined, but you've got to be generous, too. That's what I've learned from being in this band almost 10 years with these guys. Walter has been my biggest influence to draw every day, to practice instruments every day, to make art every day. And if you have that level of output, you have a whole lot to work with. And that's what's going on all the time, which makes something like random album we throw every year just part of the current mm. and the flow that Walter's created. Dare I say thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> You're very welcome. Nice. It's, it's a said. huge creative wave to ride. Let that be a lesson to everybody. And you do poetry as well? 
Oh, I started in the band as a comedian because I'm a trained MFA poet and uh, I grew up playing instruments. But I'm also a visual artist and a drawing a day practice with Walter helped me get my chops up. But everyone in the band's very multi-talented. Edry's a writer, Rachel's a teacher as well as an accomplished uh. instrumentalist, and Mary Wood dances and sings. Mike's a trained assassin. Oh, shh, <laughs> Jesus. Oh, I mean. You did need to kill them all off. Well, yeah, somebody had to do it. That's what the and you were at the player. conservatory, you said? Yeah, I was at Boston Conservatory. So that's For viola? Now. Yeah, for viola performance, and then my master's is in music education. Oh, cool. We are a decorated band. Yeah. <laughs> Joe just got some winning. degrees. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. My MFA, I call it the Mistress of Fine Ass. <laughs> <laughs> I, whenever I have to solo on ukulele, I maybe just lose some clothing. And uh, So if you, ever, if you ever Google Ghostbusters Army of Toys, it's a song where Walter introduces us all, and we usually take a solo. I take a backwards bow. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> you can't go wrong. It's in every video. <laughs> And Walter recently uh, won an award. He scored a movie that's coming out on mm-hmm. August 4th, mm-hmm. which is called Some Freaks. It's going to be in theaters everywhere worldwide, and you can see it on video on demand. And you won three Congrats. or four different Thank awards so for the score for that at different movie festivals. Oh, and festivals. we're in it. And we're, yeah, in, we're in it. And we're yeah, in the, the, party band, scene. the band makes a cameo Blinking, in the party scene. <laughs> yeah, you definitely won't miss it. I got what? to fulfill my dream of being the DJ in the movie that you see like oh, just for a second. What's a, mo- what's a movie about? It's a difficult relationship movie. Yeah. It's, I'd call it like a love story for people who hate love stories. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's like a, a romance for people who hate romance. There you go. Yeah. yeah. It's about a one-eyed kid who meets this girl who's uh, overweight. And they go through this like very real, at times uncomfortable, but, hard but movie to watch sometimes. ultimately one of the most beautiful films I've seen. So when I saw um, a lot of the, you know, the rough cut when Ian, the director, brought it to me at first... I was moved and just it it speaks so much truth in a subject that every time I see it in a movie, it's so fucking polished, you know, like, oh, love is so simple and easy and people are so nice. And it's like, you know, relationships aren't really like that. You know, life is a lot dirtier than that. And this film speaks to that a lot. And kind of what I love about music and movies that step outside of the norm is it kind of lets people know um, you're not alone in these kind of fucked up relationships. You're not alone with someone who has mental health issues. You know, you're not alone trying to find your way through life or or not feeling like you're enough, or, or this and that. Or you don't fit in. Or you don't fit in, yeah. And, right. and, and, and the, you know, the movie does this kind of beautiful, beautiful dance in, in that realm, and it's not something that would bore you if you, you know, like, oh, it's, it's a romantic comedy or something. It's, it's not only like that. It's just a really true, honest uh, piece of film that I was just really, really excited to make music for. It has Thomas Mann in it, who was just in King Kong, and um, Lily Mae Harrington, who was amazing. She was in the newest Pee Wee Herman movie, but in a bunch of other things, but I love Pee Wee Herman. Um, <laughs> She her she performance in the movie is 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 huh. amazing. That's awesome. This is yeah. uh, you're right. The subject matter, most of the movie, and you you, you wrote the music mm-hmm. thinking with that in mind. Yeah, definitely. So I mean, from the very beginning, I was getting dailies as they kind of edited them together. I think it was like two years I worked on the yeah. score. With you him, know, yeah. every with time anybody asked always. me to come to a party or do it, I was like, I can do it. Scoring. I'm scoring a movie. And who got to play it? Or is it so there, has there, a band play anything, or is it do you the majority sort of, of it is just me doing playing all the instruments? But, um, but then there's the the my, my favorite part, which is the end. And I, I'm not going to give it away, but there's this big part where it just crescendos into this full toys experience. The and toys are at the climax, as they should be. Yeah, there you <laughs> go. And and it's just it's beautiful, and I oh. hope everybody sees it. Yeah. Some freaks. Some Freaks, August 4th at a theater near you, also on video on demand. And mm. you can pre-order it at Amazon right now. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Congratulations. That is, that's so sweet. You, yeah. guys, you guys gave us some awesome vinyl. Yay. Not only is it, not is it vinyl, but it's, look at that. <laughs> it opens up into a Ouija board. Yeah. 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 We're showing all of you on the podcast out there listening. <laughs> oh. you got some good uh, in your mind's though. eye, you imagine know, Also this. go to armyoftoys.bandcamp.com and see... In the merch section, all of this beautiful vinyl that they're holding up right now. That's fantastic. And order it if you so. Wish. You know, like opening this up, it's the look, it's the smell, it's everything from like being like vinyl. a twelve year old and like yeah. owning all this amazing this reminds me of the wall, like that first time you open up the wall, <laughs> you know, it's like it's awesome. You should pull the vinyl out and look at the actual vinyl. Oh, let's do that, Chuck. It's not just the covers that are special. It's like Christmas. And Take a nice sniff. And the soft time travel is double. Oh, double. it's like a beautiful bowling ball. <laughs> <laughs> That one is not a crime. I mean, and I mean that there as a compliment. There is no crime involved in Look that. at this one. Holy smokes. That's awesome. 
you didn't leave anything to, to I mean, just that be normal. All, that's because of our fans. Our fans are fucking amazing. We did a Kickstarter for each album that we've done, and every single time our fans have stepped up. They wanted to pre-order. They wanted to be part of the videos or the art, or they wanted their own cover song. Like, we'll cover any song you want. We'll, everything like that we create, and it's, it's a huge part of us. Um, and we're super proud that our fans, uh, you know, step up and do. Do that. your fans, when they come to see you play, do they do they dress up like Rocky Horror? Do they come in and do <laughs> they dress in, in, in costumes? Yeah. They feel yeah. free to be. Yeah, I know. They yeah. feel free to be exactly themselves. We have a lot of themed shows, absolutely. Right. Yeah, like with so the night member for Christmas, something strange. Like people come in, and we'll probably we usually have like a costume contest that I'll judge, but I hate contests, so everybody wins. Um, so like, Although shows Myra like that. wins a lot. Yeah. <laughs> You know, whatever you want to wear to a toy show is always or acceptable. Not wear. Or not wear. That's Even good. like one of like nothing but just the barrel from the cartoons. Mm. That's good too. That's yeah, good just too. Pasties right. Just pasties and a G-string. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, acceptable and yeah. happens. You know, they call Sometimes. you... St- I, steam I would have crunk. Steam crunk. Yeah, what is yeah, steam crunk? That? Yeah, we, we, we are the, uh, <laughs> the pioneers of the steam Neologism. crunk movement. Um, Neologism, yeah. Labels make people feel comfortable and <laughs> allow them to get their arms around something yeah, yeah. that you can't describe. Even so if it's a yeah. made-up label. Even if it's a made-up label. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like we crunk. made up a word to describe but people would not have to try. Every interviewer says, so what would you call yourselves? Yeah, what genre are you? Here, have a word that encapsulates us perfectly. We're wordsmiths. We're happy to supply you with exactly the words you want. You seem to inspire anyone who reviews you. There's not a boring review about you. It's all very, like the language and the and the words they use. Yeah, I think you inspire them to, what cool word can I use to describe them? Or art and, enablers. And yes, yeah, you're infectious. Uh, that's, a, that's a term you're, of art that has come about from us. Yeah, they've, Walter and Edder taught me to be an art enabler, so... I put it to everyone to enable others to make art. I think it's working. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to go make an album right now. Yeah. Do it. Awesome. Music enabled. That's like a, that Pee Wee Herman quote. It, when he was inspired to go sell papers at the end of Pee Wee's Big Adventure. And he goes, I'll say, I'm going to go start a paper route right now. <laughs> <laughs> Remember? Paging Come on, Mr. People. Herman. You know, this is Mr. Herman. This is the first time I think Pee Wee Herman has come up not once but twice in an episode. <laughs> it won't be the. It won't the be the last. Word. Yeah. <laughs> when I fir- I went to go see the movie and when it was 18, 1980, what I can't remember. And we were we were watching. I'm like, what are we watching? What did we walk into? And. It's you know it's phenomenal. It's like a cult classic. Too. I've seen it a million <laughs> times. All right, we can stop no. talking about Pee Wee Herman. Now. I like Pee Wee Herman. Oh. Uh, Pee Wee Herman's definitely you know the band DNA too. His whole fun house lives in our guts. Out in uh, the the woods of Townsend, you can yeah the witch the, yeah the witch castle the witch castle witch castle wire forest. We're uh, accepting all kinds of visitors, including bears. We may arm you with an instrument, and you'll join our musical militia. Uh-oh. But you're always welcome. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you, Army, and thank you, Walter. Thank yes, you thank so you very much, much for, uh, for hanging out with us. us. That's a most well-behaved baby. Oh, he's so chill. <laughs> he's awesome. he's beautiful. Chill, thank you very much, guys. Thank, thank you. you. Very we really much appreciate it. We really appreciate it. Go yeah. toys. Yeah. Oh, no one's ever ended with applause like that. That's <laughs> for the first <laughs> one. We got a lot of people in here. We usually have like two people. <laughs> <laughs> Your song called Old Skin. Old skin, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen out there. We're gonna do this right now. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. fucking yeah. a! There goes the There's the first <laughs> fuck. I get <laughs> six, right? Enjoy oh, it. Shit. That, was the second that was my one. first shit Just as well. Say <laughs> <laughs> All right. your old skin let yourself outside you're growing horns now but none of your lovers will mind you burning so bright that's why I call you my flame I 
see a pack of dogs They all love me the same to your throne You're growing claws now It's just part of the show You're burning so bright That's why I call you my flame I see a pack of dogs, they all love me the same. Okay, so a very special thank you to Walter Sickert and the Army of Broken Toys for sitting with us. We had a great time with them. If you want to purchase their music, go to armyoftoys.com. They also have a very big presence on Facebook, so you can find out when and where they are playing. They have a lot of gigs coming up, so you definitely want to check them out live. Go to our website at abovethebasement.com where you can sign up for our newsletter, listen and subscribe to our podcast, like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and look at all the nice pictures we post on Instagram. We are everywhere. On behalf of Ronnie and myself, thanks for listening tell your friends and remember boston music like its history is unique